we've seen around 10 or 15 horses yeah. paraded here this morning, with, uh, making up your Cheltenham Festival team. Overall, how would you assess the strength of the team you've taken there this year? Yeah, got some nice nice horses to run, nice chances um, across the board, headed up, I suppose, by Brave Man's Game and Stage Star run on the Wednesday. Um, hopefully some of those horses will be competitive and run really well. Yeah, I imagine Wednesday is going to be a pivotal day for the yeah. team. Uh, starting with Brave Man's Game, I mean, you can't be anything but really hopeful of his chances the way he's gone this year. No, he's, just, he's improved physically this year, won all four of his chases, so we're going into the race in good shape. Yeah, and is there anything in terms of if it turned into a slog? I think his, his cruising speed looks one of his biggest assets. Would you have any reservations if it was to turn into a real test? He's won on soft before. I would just see. We have got the option of the shorter race if it was very testing, but hopefully sort of towards the middle end of March, the ground won't be too bad. I mean, if, it, if they race today, I think it would be soft, good to soft in places. That would be fine. Yeah, and you'll have a second string to your bow in that race in the yeah. shape of three under through five. Yeah, yeah, three under through five is a decent horse in his own race, and he's won four races. Um, He'll go well, he's tough and he stays, you just wouldn't know how good he was. Yeah, and then a stage star, he's followed a very similar route to Brave Man's Game to this point and he'll run in the Ballymore. Yeah, he's he, he's a nice horse, you know, won all three, won a grade one. Um, obviously, he's, this is a tougher race and he's running up to now, but he can't have done more than win the three he's running and looking forward to him running. Yeah, and you've got a couple of the horses uh, running in grade ones at the meeting, including the lad behind us, Politolog, who is yeah, a, already, a champion, already a champion chase winner himself. Yeah. He's, you said this morning that it could, there's a possibility it could be his last run if he was to go there again. This yeah, year. yeah, he's certainly not only going to have one or two more runs. That's it. John's dead keen to retire. I mean, you know, he's, he's 11, going on 12. There's no point asking him to do something. It's impossible. Now, um, younger legs come along into that division, so you know his welfare will be the most important thing now. Yeah, but it, look, it looks very hot race. Yeah. Obviously, the competition. Yeah, but it is a hot race. Yeah, there's nobody anything, doesn't he? No. I heard you say it was his seventh appearance at the festival this year. Yeah, well, Nuba, he gave weight to Nuba Negra, I think, and I'm sure he gave him weight, and it was second to him in the autumn. On, on, on ground, it was a bit quick for him. Um, I mean, there's a lot of people fancying New Benegra to go very close to winning the Champion Chase, so that puts him not too far behind, and you know he'll run his race again. So hopefully, hopefully he's got an outside chance, so could run into, run into a place. Yeah, and then another old favourite in the yard, of course, is Froden. He's, yeah. uh, he's going to run in the handicap, the ultimate this year, on the first day, potentially. Possibly, possibly. If the ground, I wouldn't run him if it was soft, and I would just need a good week with him, make sure we're happy with him. So he's a possible runner, rather than definite. Yeah, I mean, that's been one of the stories of the last few years, yeah. hasn't it, is the way he's progressed through yeah. the ranks and especially his relationship with Bryony. Yeah. I'm sure if there was Amazing. to be one last, uh, not a last, but a big day with him in an ultimate, I'm sure that would be go down very well with the Cheltenham crowd. Yeah, it would do, obviously. Um, but it's, just, it's a tough task. You're not getting any younger, you know. Um, yeah, he's still capable, as he showed, of beating Galvin and Minnelli and doing it down raw. But you know, when the day's right and the ground's right, he's a good horse. Yeah, and then you got a few good chances in the handicaps. I got the impression you particularly like the chances of Time White, perhaps, in the Grand Annual. Yeah, I don't think there's much between him and Il Rodito. Time White mm. might just be unexposed, whereas Il Rodito's probably crept other weights a little bit. Both real nice horses, and um, both got chances. Yeah, and lastly, Paul, we've been asking every trainer we've been doing, uh, doing these interviews with this week, mm. it's a question, a hypothetical one. If, since 2000, every if every Gold Cup winner in their prime was to run in the race in a... A since gold cup, a, yeah, legends gold, a gold cup legends race since 2000. What would you one, two, three be? And I know it's probably a diff more difficult question than most of you, seeing as you've had two of the best winners, I imagine, in the last. Since, since 2000, then. Christ, um, that's a difficult one, isn't it? Um, well, I'd say it, when I had the one, two, three, yeah, <laughs> was it called to start Denman and um. Uh, Neptune Glonge. Yeah, they were one, two, three, weren't they? So there we are. There's your answer. Yeah. Thanks very much. Paul. Okay. Cheers.